the Mediterranean, a nearly enclosed sea located at the crossroads of three continents. This relatively small area has been a center of culture and conflict for thousands of years. But like all other places, it has been defined by its past beyond human memory. This video is part of a collaboration with another YouTuber named Tolden Stone, who specializes in ancient Greek and Roman history. He'll discuss how discoveries of Ice Age fossils influenced Greek mythology. I'll talk about these fossils, and about the animals that left them. So after watching this video, click on the link in the description to check out his video. Feel free to say hi for me in the comments. Fossils are rare remnants from the past. Less than one-tenth of one percent of all animal species have even become fossils. Not individuals, whole species. Goliaths and dwarfs alike lived without ever gracing the fossil record. Their existence is lost to the sands of time for eternity. Fossils are not actually the material of a long dead organism. They're only a cast. Organic matter from an organism does not last long. Scavengers, microorganisms, and natural weathering are quick to destroy most animal remains. The only fossils that actually survive need very particular conditions. Remains typically must be covered soon after death by some form of protection. Sediments such as sand, flowing lava, or even sticky tar can preserve animals. Then as the thousands of years tick by, minerals seep into the remains and replace the organic material with rock. Once fossilized, the remains are still not safe. Geological processes are unforgiving and destroy anything in their way. Because of this, fossils closer in time to us are more common. Fossils of animals that died only 10,000 years ago are much more abundant. This is why we know much more about the Pleistocene than, say, the Cretaceous. The Mediterranean is full of different types of fossils. Italy and Greece, however, are not as rich in more ancient remains due to its geology. For this reason, we will be focusing on the Pleistocene fauna of the area. The Pleistocene fossils found around the Mediterranean and Europe are quite well preserved. This is partly due to the fact that animals living in this area over the last 100,000 years spend a lot of time in caves. The world has been in an ice age for the last 2.58 million years. What we typically refer to as the Ice Age was the last glacial period, which is a pulse of cold in the overall Ice Age. Since the world became so cold, this caused many animals and humans alike to seek refuge in caves. Caves, although not particularly warm, do offer shelter from the freezing wind and abundant snow. Animals living in caves often fossilize a lot better than the ones spending their days walking about. This is because a lot of animals tend to die in their sleep or while in hibernation. This leaves their remains untouched, and the cave protects their remains for thousands of years to come. Remains of animals are also brought into caves by predators. This behavior sometimes causes thousands of bones to accumulate in the dens of predators. This is why caves are such a great place to look for fossils. And there are many caves located in the interesting geography of the Mediterranean. Italy and Greece were once home to many fearsome predators. One particularly menacing animal was the cave bear. Standing at 3.5 meters or almost 12 feet, they stood at twice the height of a tall man. They were also massive at about 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds. They needed this size to stay warm during the winter, and this is why many animals actually grew very large during this period. Although they could take almost any animal in one-on-one -on -one combat, they were actually mainly herbivores. Another fearsome beast was the cave lion. Panthera spilea was 12% bigger than modern lions at 339 kilograms or 747 pounds. They lived throughout Europe, including modern Italy, the Iberian Peninsula, and parts of Greece. Anatolia and the Levant, however, were controlled primarily by modern lions, Panthera leo. 
Cave lions hunted a variety of animals including deer, horses, and bovids. But some enjoyed the taste of cave bear. Fossil evidence tells us that some cave lions actually preferred the flesh of these bears. During the cold winters, they would sneak into the cave of a hibernating bear and attack. Not all these attempts were successful and larger bears had a better chance of waking up to a free meal. Another lesser known animal that inhabited this region was the scimitar cat. This animal, known to science as Homotherium, had teeth larger than any living cat. They were fearsome predators about the size of African lions that had much success throughout the world hunting beasts big and small. Homotherium were known to hunt young mammoths in groups and then drag their kill deep within caves. Other predators and scavengers included wolves and hyenas. The wolves of Europe during the Pleistocene were different. They were about the same size, but they were more heavily built. Unlike modern wolves who only have to worry about the occasional brown bear, competition would have been fierce for these pack hunters. Cave hyenas also bunched up in large clans that even a cave lion would try to stay away from. These beasts were much stockier and almost twice the weight of their modern counterparts. They were known to choke down on any fragment of bone, be it a bear or an unlucky man. But the Mediterranean was home to more than just predators. One of the most impressive animals that left behind fossils in the Mediterranean was the straight tusked elephant. Paleoloxodon antiquus was a large species of elephant. It stood 4 meters or 13 feet tall and weighed twice as much as modern elephants at 13 tons. These animals have long called Europe home. When the Ice Age advanced, it and many other animals retreated to the much more habitable Mediterranean. But it also had some much smaller relatives. Elephants are surprisingly good swimmers. They are buoyant and their trunk acts as a snorkel. Because of this, they have often swam to find greener pastures. Paleoloxodon actually conquered many islands in the Mediterranean. Some of these islands were once home to the smaller descendants of Paleoloxodon. Once an animal as big as an elephant gets to an isolated island, they typically shrink. This is because of the evolutionary process of insular dwarfism. The process is complicated, but I will simplify it quickly. On an island, large herbivores like elephants get smaller because of a lack of resources and predators. There isn't enough food to eat and there is no reason to be big because there are typically no predators large enough to eat them. This is why when the ancient elephants got to these islands, they rapidly shrank. Paleoloxodon falconeri shrank so much that it was 98% smaller than its ancestors. It was only 96 centimeters or 3 foot 2 at the shoulder. The largest males only weighed 300 kg or 660 pounds. There were three other dwarf species found on Sicily, Malta, Crete, and Cyprus. They all left behind bizarre fossil remains that don't come off as being elephant in nature. The woolly mammoth also inhabited the northern Mediterranean. It fared much better than Paleoloxodon in the cold due to its hair and fat preserves. It left its massive curved tusks all over Europe. Greece and Italy were also home to the woolly rhino. A tanking beast covered in hair equipped with two horns just like the modern variety. They were a common prey item of humans and predators alike. Steppe bison were another impressive beast to be found along the Iberian Peninsula. Larger than modern bison, they also possess bigger and stronger horns. Steppe brown bear were another species found along the Mediterranean. They were more massive than modern brown bears at about 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds. Another more ancient felid that inhabited southern Europe was Dinophilus. These animals were similar to Homotherium in form, but were quite different. They were known to prey on primates. Other notable animals from southern Europe include the aurochs, horses, and Irish elk. Aurochs were the undomesticated ancestors of modern cattle. They only went extinct in about the 1600s. 
Wild horses were very common throughout Eurasia and the Mediterranean was no exception. Irish elk, despite their name, did call some of the Iberian Peninsula and Italy home in the past. They were over two meters or almost seven feet tall at the shoulder. Their heads were adorned with the largest antlers of any deer ever known. From tip to tip, they were 3.65 meters or 12 feet. The animal itself also weighed up to 700 kilograms or 1,500 pounds. Ice Age animals were truly a sight to see. I wish I had the pleasure of seeing a wild, untamed Europe. But unfortunately, their world was changing, and rather fast. The Ice Age would end with rapid climate change roughly 11,000 years ago. Some of these animals would survive for a while longer, but all would eventually fall into extinction. Their world, only a memory of the past. But their bones would still fill the caves of the Mediterranean. There were especially dense concentrations of Ice Age fossils in and around Greece, which would significantly influence Greek mythology. To learn more, check out Told in Stone's video on fossils and the Greek myths, which is linked in the description. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Check out my Instagram and comment some video ideas down below. I make videos about history of humans, ancient animals, and the occasional full-length documentary. If that sounds interesting, check out the over 100 videos I have made. Well, I'll see you on the next episode of Northo 2. See ya.